if you're sensing the Lord to lead you to a place of prayer today, would you come? If you've got a need in your life, and that means every one of us, then maybe that need is just getting so much attention. Maybe you're feeling that need in a bigger way than normal today. Maybe you realize, I, I've got to place this before God today. I invite you to come. Spend a few moments in prayer today. children, your parents today, especially with those that have children that are still school age, would you come, if, your mom, if the mom is here, the dad is here together, come and would you come and represent your children before the Lord? Maybe your grandparents of those school-aged children. Would you come and represent those children before the Lord today? Would you kneel before Him? Say, here, here's, here are my children again. Right now, Lord, here they are. Here are my grandchildren, Lord, here they are. Would you, God, please have your way with them? Please protect them. Please put a hedge of protection around them but also God help them to know that there is a there's a God who not just loves them but created them to love him and oh how he loves them today and that Jesus died for them and that you God would be be what you have promised to be to be that strength for these children to provide them with courage would Pray for that today, for your children, for your grandchildren, and maybe, maybe your guardians of children. Maybe you just feel pressed. It's not that you have children or grandchildren, but you just want to say, here, God, I, I'm, I'm bringing all children before you today in a world that is oh, so after them so destructive around them. Let's believe God to do a work in children and even through the children because God's word is very clear that Jesus wants children to come to him. He doesn't want them to be prohibited to come, but he also wants us to know that it's through children, through a child. They will be led and may we believe God wants to even use children in a powerful way beyond what our minds can even conceive in these days. Lord, children are represented at this altar. Families are represented at this altar. And that is exactly, Lord, one of the main reasons for the altar is to bring our cares and bring our petitions, bring our requests, bring our sacrifices. And that is exactly what children should be. We must give them to you, God. They're yours already. But continue to give them over to you, God, because you have the perfect plan and perfect will for their lives. And God, we don't want them to miss it. Want them to be in the center of it. So as we bring children to you, God, we also bring ourselves to you because we've got to be surrendered. We've got to be a sacrifice on your altar before you so that you, God, are able to use us to help these impressionable, precious children. That we, God, don't get in the way of your plan and will in their lives. That we, God, are a part of your will and plan for their lives. Everyone and everything is placed at your feet today, Father. Oh, how we give you thanks today. How we give you praise today because you... You just 
serve God. How great is our God. Great is thy faithfulness. We give you glory. Oh, we give you praise. We give you honor. Oh, Lord, help us to be a people. The people, Lord, that you want us to be, a people that is surrendered to you. Oh, God, help us to decide, to decide for truth. Your truth, the only truth. We bless your name today, Father. And we pray this in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. Oh, there is victory found in your name, Father. There is hope found in your name, Father. There is joy and peace found in you, Father. There is strength found in you. Oh, God. May we be wide open to you today. May our hearts be open to you today so that we can be attuned to you today. Oh, God, capture our minds so that our minds aren't our minds any longer. We, we, we Lord, allow you to make our minds the mind of Christ. so we can have the right thoughts the right responses the right emotions the right decisions because we're counting on you to be in control of us to lead and guide and direct us oh how we need you oh how we are so in desperate need of you Father hear and answer prayer today. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your mighty name. Praise your mighty name. Praise your mighty name. our God oh see how great is our God and all will see how great how great is is our God I'll sing it again how great is our God sing with me how great is our How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Praise your holy name, praise your holy name. Stand with me as we honor God's word today. Deciding for truth. Wholehearted commitment. That's where we are today as we began last week for, with this, this series with uh, the Browns being here. But deciding for truth. Read this with me as we get, look to God's word. For we will be counted as righteous. Come along with me. For we will be counted as righteous when we obey all the commands the Lord our God has given us. Lord, guide us. Guide us, Lord. Teach us from your holy truth today. 
In your name we pray. And everyone said amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you for standing, honoring God's word. So Deuteronomy is a big part of the Exodus. The Exodus being where Moses is leading the nation of Israel out of the captivity of Egypt. Pharaoh had held them for a very, very, very long time, hundreds of years, being held captive. You, you realize that it only takes about 30 days for someone to create a, a new habit, and then it takes 40 days for someone to actually begin to live a different kind of life, a lifestyle change. So you can imagine that when someone is being, has been held captive for for near 400 years, that all of a sudden, uh, generations, several generations now, believe themselves to be slaves. It just has become normal. It's become their way of life. It's what they've, they've accepted as, as who they are. They are there to serve the, the Egyptians. And mind you, you know, they had, had lots of food, they had plenty to drink, all of that. But they were slaves. They were captives. They were not where they were supposed to be. They were God's people. And God had heard their cry and Really, in essence, God had had enough. God had had enough of his people being held captive. God had enough of, of his children being slaves to people that were not his people. You ever get to a place in something, you say, I've had enough. Anybody experience that this week? I've had enough. Anybody experience that, experience that this morning? Yet? I've had enough. How was the car ride for some of you this morning to church? Would it have been okay if we had a camera in every one of your cars? We were videoing and we had the audio. Little did you know, take a look at the camera. I'm just... <laughs> Woo! I went to meddling, didn't I? It's amazing how things can be so twisted and turned and how something can torque us so quick and where does that come from because too quickly we can get held captive by a thought or a feeling or are you with me so here we are Moses is being used of God as the one to help deliver God's people from where God doesn't want them to be any longer and here in Deuteronomy chapter 6, we find some very pointed, very specific, very directed words from God through Moses to the people of God. So allow yourself to be who you are today, people of God, God's creation. So what God is saying through Moses, God wants you to hear it for you today. Not just those people that, that are now coming out of Egypt. He wants you to hear. He wants, me, he wants us to hear what he is saying to us right now today in these very moments right here. So whether we're here in person, online, God wants you to hear this for you right where you are, where your marriage is, where your family is, where God's people are, the church, where this nation is. God wants us to hear his truth because he wants to guide us in deciding for his truth. Yes, we all know we are quickly headed into an election we must decide for truth. Throw everything out with all the water. We're not deciding on party. God, help us. God's bigger than that. We're deciding on God's truth. Where is God's truth more, more in stance with? We've got to decide for truth. Are you hearing me? We don't have any political messiahs, folks. We have one messiah. His name is Jesus. Anybody swallow hard yet? 
Here we go. If you're taking notes, the, to wholeheartedly, we're talking about wholehearted commitment, all right? To wholeheartedly decide for the truth, God's truth, it requires commitment to, first of all, obedience. Obedience. If we're going to be wholehearted in our commitment to the truth of God, we have to decide to be obedient to the truth of God. You with me there? Well, let's define what obedient is. Obedient is this. Simply put, obedient, submissive to authority, comply with orders, fulfill one's responsibility. So that mean that sounds fairly elementary, doesn't it? I mean, to be obedient is just <laughs> it's really to do what you're supposed to do, all right? And stick with it until you got it done, right? Read this with me. Loud and strong. These are the commands, decrees, and regulations that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you. You must obey them. What did it say? You must obey them. One more time. You must obey them in the land you're about to enter and occupy. Verse 2. And you and your children and grandchildren must fear the Lord your God as long as you live. If you obey. Again, if you obey. One more time. If you obey all his decrees and commands, you will enjoy a long life. In the Western world, Western culture, Western church, we, we tend to associate enjoy a long life with many years. It's not so much the years that we might have a longness of. You see, when, when you and I decide for truth, to obey God, there is something that begins to happen in our longevity. In our, in our life, beyond our years on this planet, something begins to take place when you and I decide for truth that begins to carry over from one generation to the next. Something gets, gets planted in the hearts of children, then grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren. It just keeps going. There's longevity that takes place when you and I make a commitment, a wholehearted commitment, and that we will begin to experience longevity. Because we can quickly say, well, what about the person that's been devoted and obedient to God? What, what about them when their life is cut so short so quickly? Oh, hang on now. Yes, we experience that. We feel that. We, we mourn that. We suffer the loss from that. But if there has been a wholehearted commitment to the truth of God, that person's life, how they have lived, continues on because of how they lived. So there's a big decision that you and I have to make in this at this point is, are we going to choose truth? Are we going to live for truth so that whenever our life ends on this planet, that what we have lived, how we have lived, has affected those who come behind us for all eternity? Really, we got to... Really look at that right now. Am I, am I living a life right now that, that would say, you know, if I'm, if I'm obeying all his decrees and commands, that no matter how long, how many days I've got on this planet, my life is going to continue. How I've lived a godly, obedient life will continue. Hmm. Moses is emphasizing once again to these people, God's people, that he is a part of, all right? Though, though Moses was raised by Pharaoh, he was a Hebrew. He was of the, of the people of God, and now he's a part of something he never would have dreamt he would have been a part of, but he is being used of God to help these people get free from where they've been held captive. 
He's becoming the shepherd of God's people. These sheep that need direction and guidance to not only get away from where they are, but to begin to think differently. So it's not just geography that changes everything. We've got to begin to think differently, don't we? Because what we think is really what we become, right? If you think, <laughs> if you think long and hard enough that, that you are a discouraged person, guess what? You'll become discouraged. If you think long and hard enough that I, I'm, I'm going to be a, a happy, jovial person, guess what? You'll begin to become more like that. Not a bad decision for any of us. Amen? It's not, smile at me, would you? But Moses is being used of God once again to share that the people of God, if they will obey God, they will obey God's law, His truth, that all will go well with them. Now, wait a minute. Don't, doesn't the journey involve so many difficult things, trying and painful things? Absolutely, it does. Is any one of us here today online with us here? Have, have, we, have we had up until this moment a, a, a pain-free, completely joyful uh, cakewalk of a life? Oh, no. Not one of us. So there is difficulty along the way. Things will happen that are not good in our lives. It's true. But there is something that happens when people wholeheartedly decide to be obedient to God's word, God's truth. Whatever comes, whatever goes, whatever we experience or what we don't, what we have or what we don't have, we find ourselves like the Apostle Paul says, I have become content in all things. That means I'm, I'm accepting of where I am. I'm trusting God for where I am. I know he will lead me through. So I know with God all will go well with me. Does not mean that all things will go well. With God, all will go well with us. It's a good clarifying, good defining there. We need that because too often we get that twisted. We think if we will obey God, then everything is going to be so good. No, not in this world. Not in this world. Read this with me. Let's continue in God's word here. Verse 3, read it aloud with me. Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey then all will go well with you and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. One of the greatest blessings when it came to God's people was children. The blessing of little ones. Snotty noses and all. It was all blessing. Because, watch this, it wasn't just the, uh, the blessing of having others in the home and more mouths to feed. They saw it as God is blessing us with more of his image that we would pour our lives into and that we would equip and we would pour his truth into so that his truth, his way, his will would be pursued Time and time and time again, generation after generation after generation. That's what God is doing when there is a blessing of children. Do children always provide those who are caring for them blessings? No, not all the time. Amen? 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 
Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes these little things are like, uh, you know. But once again, when God brings us back to a place like Deuteronomy 6, we realize once again, as Moses was sharing to the people of God once again, if we will seek to obey the truth of God, God will bless us abundantly, and out of God's blessing will flow new life. New life. What are, what are children, what are babies? New life. Precious gift of life. Oh, may we obey. What else? What else, church? What else deserves our obedience, to be quite honest? What else deserves your and my obedience? What else deserves our submission? What else in this old world deserves that more than the truth of God? Something miraculous takes place when individuals, when families, when the family of God, the church, the body of Christ, when, when cities, when nations, when, when there is a deciding decision that I'm going to pursue the truth of God, to live out the truth of God, something miraculous happens. The focus of what matters gets altered. The desires of people's hearts changes. What does that? God does that. He wants a people that love him, long for him, want to honor him, want to please him, want to obey him. He is a father. He wants his children to come along with him, to trust him. Even if you don't understand him sometimes, which is much of the time, it's I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to, I'm going to decide for you, God. I'm going to go with you, God. I'm going to do everything I can to wholeheartedly obey you, God, even if others don't. The world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, right? So as long, I mean, if, if that's what it means for us to obey God, we got to say, okay, the, the world has to be left behind by me. I have to decide for him. Yes. Let's go further here. Number two. To wholeheartedly decide for truth, it requires a commitment not just to obedience, but to dedication. Dedication. Uh, in, in the Church of the Nazarene, in, in much of evangelical Christian, Christianity, we, we, we do, a, do dedication of, of babies or children. Why do we do such a thing? It is, it's very, it's, it is very symbolic. It is a ritual, but it is much more than those two things. It's, it's a decision that's being made in front of witnesses to say that I believe that this child has come from God. So God has entrusted us or, or me or who, with this child and now I'm saying before God and other people that I am going to live a life for God before this child so this child can't miss God. It's a, it's a, it's a dedication. It's, it's not just I'm dedicating this child to God, but I'm dedicating myself to to God for this child. I, I'm taking an oath. I am, I'm, I'm staking a claim here. I will pursue God and I will lead this child in, in the ways of God because I believe that's the truth. I don't, want, I don't want this child, I don't want these children to miss the truth of God. 
I don't think I'll get a debate from anybody. But right now, today, in these days, more than ever, we have got to keep the truth of God before children. Because they are not receiving truth from secular culture. They're not. So if we are going to help them to know the truth of God, they've got to hear it, but they've got to see it. Don't just give lip service to kids that this is, this is God's will, this is God's way, and, and live quite another. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. You'll blow it, you'll blow it all apart. You talk about God on, on one side of your mouth, you're cussing and flying off the handle and all that kind of stuff. Don't do that. If you are doing that, get that before God and get God, have God to wash and cleanse you of that. What does it mean to, to be dedicated? Simple definition of, of dedicate. To devote to a serious purpose. And, I, you know, I know there's, there are many, many, many serious purposes out there in life. We all have many serious purposes with, when it comes to our homes, our families. We have many of them. But, but to, to allow ourselves to get to that place where we say, you know what? I know there are many things that I have to care for. I'm responsible of. But there is one thing that's more important than them all, and that is the truth of God. If I don't do anything else, again, I'm not telling you to go out and just no do nothing else. But if I don't do anything else other than pursue the truth of God, do that. But I promise you, when you pursue God, when we are, are going to be dedicated to the truth of God, God will then help us and guide us to be responsible for the other things that are important in life. It's amazing. It's a part of the miracle happening that takes place when God is the one that's over everything about you and me. He can control us. He can direct us. And, and the more that we pursue him to live out the truth, the more we are willing to go with him. We're, we're not like, a, got to be careful about this, we're not like some mule that's being led along, pulled. Come on, would you come on, get behind it. Go! Now the more we want to, live in the truth the more that we are so willing to be led by the truth are you with me uh, read this with me listen O israel the lord is our god the lord alone and you must love the lord your god with all your heart all your soul and all your strength i'll keep going and you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Oh, keep going here. Repeat them again and again to your children. Read that again. Repeat them again and again to your children. One more time. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Is it obvious to you? It is to me. That God does not want you and I to miss his truth. He wants it to be everywhere. So that wherever we look, wherever we hear, whatever's going on, his truth is pervasive. I mean, it's, it's out there. It's gold. It, we, we can't miss it. It's like, it's like a secular billboards out there that are trying to get a message out there. You know what I'm talking about. 
It's like God's truth is everywhere. It is billboarded everywhere. We can't miss it. Wherever we look, it's there. Whatever station we turn on, it's there. God does not want any possible room to, to, to open up a gap in our life where, where what is not truth begins to seep in. interesting uh, this portion of Deuteronomy verses 4 through 9 is what is called the Shema for Orthodox Jews it's called the Shema it's something that that an Orthodox Jew repeats twice every single day to love the Lord your God with all your heart soul mind and strength it's that the it's that word that is everywhere for the Orthodox Jew. I mean, yes, Deuteronomy is the old law, the old covenant. But what happens in the New Testament with Jesus? What does he do? He repeats this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And he also adds the second of the, of the commandments. What is that? Love your neighbor as yourself. Let me just add this. This is just for perspective, biblical understanding purposes. You can't live your life doing number two without doing number one first. Number two is I'm doing lots of good things. Loving my neighbor, care for my neighbor, feed my neighbor, I'm gifting my neighbor. Da, da, da. No, no. You, you've got to make sure that you're loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength first. So that number two is able to be done by God through you. Are you with me? The Shema. Something must have been extremely important for God to use his son, that when his son came and his son was doing his work for those three years, that he himself, the word that became flesh, is uttering the Shema. So this, this, is, this, this is so important. This is an indication that Jesus does not do away with the old covenant. He is the new covenant, but he's not just the new covenant to throw out the old, he is the completion of the covenant of God. So he's saying over here with Moses, love the Lord your God with all your soul, heart, soul, mind, strength for God's people. That's, that same commandment that was given then is the same commandment that's needed now. It doesn't change. We must love God our God, the truth, with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength, everything we got, so that we can love others like we love ourselves. Deuteronomy 10, let's go back. Read it with me. The Lord your God will soon bring you into the land he swore to give you when he made a vow to your ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a land with large, prosperous cities that you did not build. Keep going. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You will draw water from cisterns that you did not dig. And you will eat from vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill in this land. Watch this. Keep going. Be careful not to forget the Lord. Be careful not to forget the Lord. Who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. All of this that he is leading you into, all of this that God is going to provide for you, you didn't do it. You didn't build it. You didn't plant it. 
So for, for whatever reason, it says God loves you no matter what. But even in knowing that God loves you and me no matter what, he wants us to be dedicated to him. His truth. Because if we are, the miraculous will happen in our lives and God will lead us into what he has promised us, promised to our ancestors that we will be led into a land flowing with milk and honey. What's that mean? It's not just a matter of what gets, gets taken through the mouth. No, it's an indication that what God wants to lead us into his truth is a, is a constant fountain of treasure of life. Wholehearted commitment to obedience. Wholehearted commitment. Dedication. It's got verse 13 for me. Read this. You must fear the Lord your God and serve him. When you take an oath, you must use only his name. Do you fear the Lord today? Let me define that. Do you wholeheartedly respect God today? That's what this fear is about. It's realizing <laughs> what we, as, uh, that we, some, some of us parents have said this to our kids. We, we brought you into this world. We'll take you out. We'll say it in jest. Well, some have meant it. <laughs> this thing, I... I I fear God. He's my maker. He created me. He, he molded me. He fashioned me. He gave life to me. He breathes life into me. If he doesn't breathe into me, I have no life. So I fear the Lord. And not only fear, not only that, but I serve him. I, I have life because of him, and if he gives me life, then I'm going to serve him. I'm going to give him my life. Because if we have taken an oath saying that I commit my life to God, I, I am going to honor God. I'm dedicating my life to God. I'm going to obey God. saying that I have no life, I have no being, I have no purpose outside of him. So I want to fully give my life completely at all times, every day, every moment to God, because that's where I find purpose. That's where I find life. That's where I realize I do have something that, that's worth my committing to. Obediently, there is something that's worth my dedicating my whole life to. And that's the truth of God. The truth of Almighty God. Be careful not to forget the Lord. Third is this. To wholeheartedly decide for truth. All my heart. All my heart is going to decide for the truth of God. It requires a commitment to live truth. So it's not just something that's, that's external from me. It's just not something that I set up as a goal for my life. That I'm going to do this. I, I'm going to have these boxes and these things next to those boxes. And I'm going to spend my life doing these things. I'm going to check them off as I go. 
I'm going to obey these things. I'm going to dedicate my life to these things. No, it goes much beyond that. It's saying, I'm going to commit my whole heart to live this truth. Not just do it, not just talk about it, not just teach it, not just preach it. But I'm going to dedicate my life to living this truth. So when you begin to live for something, when you begin to live by something, you, your life begins to embody that and it begins to embody you. It alters your behavior. It alters the way you think. It alters the way you move and have being. It's something that just takes hold of you and you take hold of it. Verse 14. Read it with me. You must not worship any of the gods of neighboring nations. Keep going. For the Lord your God who lives among you is a jealous God. His anger will flare up against you and he will wipe you from the face of the earth. Woo! 16. You must not test the Lord your God as you did when you complained at Massa. You must diligently obey the commands of the Lord your God, all the laws and decrees he has given you. 18. Do do what is right and good in the Lord's sight. Read it again. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so all will go well with you. Then you will enter and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors. 19 says this. You will drive out all the enemies living in the land just as the Lord said you would. You've heard this phrasing, haven't you? Wherever the light is, darkness can exist. Light drives out Darkness. Light moves darkness out. If darkness is is, uh, sleeping in the house, if light comes in, boom! Darkness has got to go. You ever been on a country road? Got your your, uh, head... High beams on, your, your high, the high lights, it's all dark out there. You don't, man, you're just hoping, you're just hoping that you can see well. Then all of a sudden, a deer jumps out in front of you. You know what I'm talking about? The darkness that that deer was in, all of a sudden, got ushered out of its path. But it startled you because what was there on the path that was just road and the light showing on the road, you now have something on the path that is in your clear view and bright that doesn't belong. One of two things will happen. Either the deer will be startled enough to leave that space, or your vehicle will help it move. Wherever God guides us, wherever the truth of God is guiding us, the enemy is around. Hear this. And if the enemy is around wherever the truth is guiding us, God is guiding us there for a divine purpose. And that's for God to use us to move the enemy out where the enemy doesn't belong. Whether it's in a heart, 
whether it's in a marriage, whether it's in a family, whether it's in a church, whether it's in a nation, wherever. God wants to use his people to move the enemies out because God's people cannot cohabitate with enemy. Are you with me? It's the truth. Truth drives out what is not. Once again, we need the truth of God now more than ever when it comes to our lifetimes. We need the truth of God not just something that's external, but we need the truth of God that's internal, that takes over us, and we begin to live out the truth of God in our words, in our actions, and in and, and everything that we do. We operate in the truth of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Serving God, folks, has to come from a wholehearted obedience and acceptance of His truth. I want you to stand with me. Bow your heads with me, too, please. Adam, go ahead and play, brother. Deuteronomy verse 20 of chapter 6. It's so important. It says this, and this again, this is Moses being used of God to speak his truth, God's truth into the people of God. So hear it right now again as if it was the first time it was ever spoken. In the future, your children will ask you, what is the meaning of these laws, decrees, and regulations? In today's wording would be, what's the meaning of the Bible? What's the meaning of these scriptures what's the meaning mommy daddy mama papa what's the meaning of what this this bible is saying what's it mean that the lord our god is commanding us to obey. Children might ask, and not just children, others of all ages might ask and certainly are asking, what's the meaning of what you call God's truth? What's this have to do with me? People are asking. Why is this such a big deal? People are asking. Some may ask in jest. Some may ask flippantly and sarcastically. And everyone asks that question of what is the meaning of this from a deep down desire in the heart that God created them with they want to know what truth is and because God made each one everyone needs to know the truth 
His truth, His word, His ways, His decrees, His word. God, because of his love for you and me, paid the ultimate price with a sacrifice with his own son, one and only son. His word, he made it flesh. He sent it to live, to move to give to live so for all of us this morning we need a fresh visitation an encounter with the truth of God the word of God and that's Jesus that's Jesus there's nothing more important for any of us than to encounter the Word and allow the Word, God's truth, Himself, that we would become one with Him. One with Him. Father, you know each of us right where we are today. You know where our focus is right now in this very moment, at this very second. You know what we think about, what we're feeling. You, you know the, the path that we are on. You, you know the, the one you want us on. You, you know the steps we take, and you want us to take yours. But uh, too often times, Lord, we're, we're stepping in other directions. So you're making a, a strong, loving appeal to us once again, as you did back through Moses and your people in Deuteronomy. You're making that strong, loving appeal to us today, right now, in October of 2024. You want us to be wholeheartedly dedicated to you wholeheartedly committed to you and wholeheartedly obedient to you and Lord I pray that we would want to be that we wouldn't allow, we wouldn't allow anything else to be what, what receives our whole heart and God help us to not diversify our heart that you deserve it all, God. You deserve it all. And your promise is still true for every one of us today. That if we will obey you, if we will obey the truth of God, all will go well with us. We will have a long life. Decades will go past us. Generations will come behind us. And they will know the truth of God because we were obedient and dedicated and we lived the truth while we had life. That's your desire this morning, folks. We just raise a hand. It doesn't matter which one. I, I want to be wholeheartedly committed to being obedient to, to the truth of God. I want to be dedicated to the truth of God. I want to make sure that I'm living the truth of God. Just raise a hand saying, yes, that's, that's what I want to be. I can't do that on my own, but I'm I'm putting myself before God because I want to live that kind of life. I want to live truth. I want to decide 
at all times and in every situation I want to decide for the truth of God. Put your hands down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your constant, incredible, transformative love you have for us. Thank you, God, that you don't want us to be kept in, in bondage and in slavery. That you want us to be free in your truth, to operate in your truth, to, to live out your truth. So that you, God, can use us to convince others that you are truth. Have your way, Lord, with each of our hearts so that we, God, can be wholehearted for you. Praying this in your powerful and holy name. Everyone said amen. I want you to read this with me. You can keep playing too, Adam. Read this with me. Last five verses of, of chapter six. You ready? Then you must tell them, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand. The Lord did miraculous signs and wonders before our eyes, dealing terrifying blows against Egypt and Pharaoh and all his people. He brought us out of Egypt so he could give us this land he had sworn to give our ancestors. And the Lord our God commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear him so he can continue to bless us and preserve our lives as he has done to this day. 25, for we will be counted as righteous when we obey the commands the Lord our God has given us. Brothers and sisters, go and obey the truth so that you can be counted as righteous. God bless you. Love you. Have a great rest of your day.